if you have a messed up situation with power and love, <laughs> you have to define it yourself anew and take it into your own hands. You take your power and your emotions into your own hands and um, do it step by step by step by step by step. It's not just one step, it's a lot of steps and it's a lifelong process and this is really nice to experience step by step by step by step your growth. Hello and welcome to the Ronnie Lever Show where every week we bring you fascinating guests with inspiring stories of success and overcoming obstacles from the world of sports, business and entertainment. To support this channel, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell and hit the like button so that we can deliver you the best content possible. She's an author and has written several books about power. She also teaches at universities on power and leadership. She's touching hearts, minds and collective awareness as a speaker. She is consulting companies how to organize high performance. And as a coach, she is renewing people from the inside out. Joining us live from Vienna, Austria, I'm very happy to have her on the show. Please welcome, here is Dr. Maria Spindler. Woo! Hi, it's great to be here with you. Thanks for having me. And I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm happy to have you here as well. Today we're going to learn all about emotions and power as drivers and guides to a new life of passion and desires. But before we get into all of that, when you're looking at your life today and think back on your journey, was this what you had in mind when you were a kid? Was it was that what you had imagined? No, it's uh, when I was a kid until 10, I imagined nothing. And at 10, something really happened to me because I come from a rather troubled family. I was laying on the grass under an apple tree and I had the feeling something is opening. And it was like the heaven is opening and the earth underneath me. And I had the feeling there's a shift. There's something good coming out of this. And from that point on, I had this feeling inside me, this touching feeling as an image which accompanied me step by step in my life. And from this point on, my life became positive or more positive step by step. Wow, that, that, that sounds like uh, Isaac Newton underneath the apple tree when the apple <laughs> fell down. So <laughs> what, what, what do you imagine brought this realization or this insight to you? It was that I had really, I felt so lost. I had the feeling I have no connection. And I think it was such an urge in my life that I didn't see anything for my future. And it was like, a crossroad or something breaking down and something new emerging out of this. And it made me really happy, also my environment didn't understand it because I became positive and I said, okay, I could do this and this and this and this in my life. And my environment, the, my parents and um, relatives said, oh, this will never happen. How, how do you, how would this come into your life? But I knew this would come because I had the feeling inside me. Wow. So it sounds like there were already a lot of limiting beliefs around you that were yes. being put upon you. And I, I mean, that's, that's something that is very common everywhere. And at the same time, you were, okay, I'm not going to let other people tell me what I cannot do. I'm going to be different. Where, where did the strength come in and how was that? It's it. A little bit strange when I explain it today because <laughs> it sounds so like metaphysics. You know, there's this physical world and then there's a world beyond or above or outside us. And I had the feeling there's an energy which is all around me that I wouldn't say protects me, but it's I can dive into it whenever I want. And this is what I make today out of it. Back then, I didn't know what happened. It was a little bit strange to me. 
Mm -hmm. So also there, there were um, other things that were actually not running for you, but I actually, or that you might consider as running against you. You were legisthenic. Uh, uh, yes. This dyslexic basically is, is, is the yeah. word in English. Uh, I, I can relate to that. I was in, in a dyslexic class as well uh, after school. And at the same time, um, not coming from a, let's say from, from an upper class um, yeah. upbringing where everything was handed to you on a silver platter. And, and so how was that? And how did you, how did you face that? I was a kid when I was, when I went into school, I was very much afraid. I didn't dare to speak up. And once my mother came home from the, you know, when the parents have to go to the teachers and she was very, very, how can I say, upset with me. She said, okay, the teacher complained about you because you don't raise your hand when you know something. But when I, she asked me, the teacher, I knew it. So I was so afraid to make something wrong because I also couldn't read properly. Now, as a dyslexic, you can't combine the words, the, the letters of the word. So reading was really, really difficult for me. And I was completely afraid. And also speaking was completely difficult for me. And I tried to form the sentences in my head before I speak them. And of course, then you lose all your livelihood. It's like life is drained out of you because you try to learn it like by heart, no? And it's more mechanic. So I was very, let's say, enclosed in myself. So this was the dyslexic thing. And later on, I became, let's say, a, nearly addicted to theory. And this was really good because the theory, I, I really could dig into different theories. And then I learned about theories about freedom and how to change life and whatever. And I knew I have to bring it from my mind to my heart. And this was a really long journey. And this was also the journey when I made step by step by step up and became involved with my own emotions. And wow. Yeah. yeah. It, it sounds like when, when you are um, describing that, at first when you were a kid, you were afraid to stick your head out. You just didn't want to be seen, didn't want to be noticed. You just didn't want to make a mistake. And then you gradually, through diving into the theory, you evolve and empowered yourself as well. Was this a gradual change that happened in, in your life or was there a certain turning point? There were several turning points. I don't, I don't believe in there's just one turning point. It's several turning points where you, it's like peeling an onion, you know, so uh, going somehow closer and closer to your own heart or in becoming in more and more yourself. So, there, were, there was this turning point with the apple tree, of course, but also other turning points where I was with a partner who died. It was really, really sad, and I had the feeling I don't want to live anymore. And it took me like a journey of one and a half hours, one and a half years, and then I realized this sadness brought me very, very close to myself. And from that point on, I was 34, I realized I'm a deep diver. And I also realized that when there's the pain, you have to go a little bit deeper than the pain so that you can shift your life. So, of course, first I realized I'm completely captured in this pain. And then I realized, okay, this pain is just one step in my life. And there's something else coming. And this was a really big step up. And what do I really want in my life? And how can I fulfill my desires? And how can I also be joyful? Or so my life was from the beginning not really easy going. So, and I see it today as that I had to dive so deep. I had to jump very high. <laughs> and this brought a really a lot of joy into my life. And today it's my business. So 
It's very How beautiful. Make- yeah. Before we go into the business aspect, also, uh, first of all, deep diver, it's, it's an emotional deep dive to really dive in demo- emotionally deep to, to develop some sides and aspects of you or facets of you that, that otherwise you would have never been able to develop in the first place. Also, what, what you, what you were, um, I think another, another point and that many people can relate to that when you are actually going through a deep hole and then you're getting out on the other side. This also gives you a lot of leverage. This gives you a lot of leverage to actually pursue your dreams, to actually go after things that you want. Because at the same time, this is this is the, what fuels a fire in a way. And there are there are many examples of of very very successful or the most successful people in the world. They also have some dark story that they had to go through in order to to go on the other side. And and that's something very fascinating. And now you're. I already mentioned it in, in the introduction that you're talking. And, and by the way, when, when, when listening to you before, it's, it sounds a lot of sadness and so on. But on the other side, you're also very joyful and very happy and, and a lot of uh, a very laughing person, right? Yes, that's true. <laughs> so there, there is just, just not to give the impression that you're just, um, just, just sad. And so it's really something very beautiful. Talking about power. And self-esteem, how, what is the connection between power and self-esteem? Uh, I think we in the world, we see power as very negative because we experienced it negative in childhood or school or wherever. wherever. Now things happen, people try to make us small or whatever. And when we find ourselves, when we find our, what, do I really want to think and how do I really want to feel in life and what do I really want to do in life? What's my passion? Then we step up. And I think this, what do I want is really important to, how can I say, make a line into the future. Maybe it's not even coming into place like I imagine it, but it gives me hope that I can do something. And this is making steps by steps by steps, no matter what happens in the context where I'm in or in the neighborhood or whatever. So means I empower myself doing what is really, really important for me. And this means I have to know myself. I have to come into my, let's say, heart or soul or whatever you want to call it. So I have to find myself and we, of course, always lose ourselves in this process again. And then it's, um, and to lose ourselves or to come in contact with, with something which doesn't feel that great means also there's an imbalance. And with the next step, I can make a new balance. And I'm at the same time at the next step of my development. And means I, I, um, increased my capability to deal with problems, with difficult things or whatever. No? And so, when I know, so. yeah, when I know this, I know each problem comes in, which comes into my life is a next opportunity to become more joyful and to see the life more positive. So to, to bring it back to the original question with the connection between power and self-esteem, it goes as I understand it, very much hand in hand, yes. because if you have a low self-esteem, you also feel powerless. And yes. the more the more self-esteem you are getting, the more empowered you feel. The more is that would that be a fair way to say it? Yes. The more I know I'm u- unique and I can do this, and I want to do this. And self-esteem means I see myself as unique. And this means also to deal with that I'm not always fitting into situations because when I fit into situations means I very often make myself small. So, and when I have the capability to say, okay, maybe I don't fit in here. I don't have to fit in here because I go my own steps in my own life and I empower myself to go my own steps. I don't wait until someone else is empowering me because I always can empower myself. Mm. So what would be, if somebody is um, 
in a place where they feel, well, I'm just starting out. I have no experience. I'm, I'm, what can I bring to the table? I don't, or I, I don't feel any power when I'm meeting with somebody. I'm just the, the beggar to please give me a job or please give me an opportunity. How can I empower myself and shift the power scale? Does this, is this, and, and I'm going to take it one step further. Is this something that first needs to happen in your own mind? Yeah, I, I, I'm not so sure about this because some, I am a person, it needs to happen in my own brain. I have to think it first, no? Maybe some people, they just have an intuition about it. No? Could also be, no? So maybe the access point is a little bit different, but you have to follow your own concept, your own, what would feel, your own inner image, what will, would feel good in my life. And therefore, I said this image, which came when I was 10, I had an image in myself, what feels good inside me? And uh, how to bring it all back to me, what feels good? And then you can think of when I, let's say, join an organization or join a club or whatever, what would be the condition that makes me feel good there? And then you speak it out loud there in the situation. For me, it's important that this and this and that happens. Otherwise, I'm not interested to join you. So you can choose in life. Mm. And the moment that you realize that you have the choice, you also shift the power scale because it's not just about, oh my God, this is the only option that I have. And if, if, if that doesn't work out, I have no idea what I'm going to do. But the moment that you are actually, you have several choices, like on a buffet, like, okay, if this is not there, I'm going to take this. If this is not there, I'm going to take this. Is, the, is that a way to frame it? Yes, because we are never dependent 100% on one situation or one person. Because there are billions of people <laughs> and a lot of situations. We just have to step into another context. And it, when I realized this, that context is so important for me. I realized that I also can create context so that I can say, okay, I would like to work with you in this context and I would like to do this. And uh, my condition for bringing out the best in myself is this and this and that. So as soon as I know it, I can voice it. And then when I connect to someone, I can create it with this person or not. If I can't create it with this person, I can create it with someone else. So let's make it practical. Let's let's if if somebody would come to you and say, "Hey, um I would like to increase my my self-esteem. I would like to become more powerful. Um what would be the the steps that I need to take?" I would um because I have the experience when people are afraid or feel not powerful, they have like a red race in their brain. <laughs> running <laughs> so, and the red race is always telling them okay you are worth nothing you are not powerful you can't do anything you have no choices or whatever and what i do it's also the trick in meditation is to calm down this red race and focus on the body it, this is for me always the first step and focusing on the body is also focusing on how do I breathe and how does myself feel in my body? And when you calm down your red rays, it, the feeling is becoming positive. That's always the case because you can't breathe in and think at the same time. And then you feel your chest opening and you feel maybe your heart beating. And then you are more at home inside yourself. And this opens choices because the retro says, okay, it's always going like this, 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 this. You have this negative experience and it's going this next time like this and this and this. And as soon as you open this, as soon as you open your chest and see what you want and what you feel and what feels good for you, you think, okay, this is not the best choice. I really have to go somewhere else. And maybe I don't even know where this is. But I have the feeling I can do it. And this is the first step up. That sounds like a recipe to attract um, not just 
opportunities for for work but also all kinds of things into your life yes and because i think when you go positive into a, into the world people who also want to have a positive life or work situation connect to you when you go negative into the world you attract all negative things because the people you know where you have more of the we say this type of birds this yeah more of them will join them and it's everything how you approach the world no mm. that's very fascinating that's that's very so um another thing that we need to that we need to mention is is of course it's all about um and, and when you grew up there were certain things that were allowed and other things that were taboos yeah that were things that, that you were not allowed to do and yes. i think that's another thing to that you need to in order to empower yourself it's also to break out of what is a taboo or what the environment or a society tells you what what is taboo yes i grew up on countryside where it was for women not an easy, an easy life no? and i knew i don't fit into this context but i you know when you have a family you have the feeling this is my blood and i really have to stick to it and when i became and i suffered a lot no each time when i met my family i saw the strategy in, in this family and it made me really 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 sad no i visited them i came back to my home in vienna i was so i was sometimes really crying no because it was so sad to be there and it was also that i had the feeling they don't appreciate they can't even understand how my life is now and i couldn't go with my let's say positive flow yeah they made it negative and at a certain point it was so painful for me that i decided to break with my family and this is on the one hand of course really really sad and on the other hand it was to freeing me and i realized i'm not so much pulled down anymore and i can let's say fly into the world and i started working more internationally and i realized i can create families which are social families where i can really really connect on an equal level and where i can feel the connection where i can feel home when i meet these people and i had the feeling this gave me so much more, so many more choices in my life and i could like flower in my life i it was like okay a whole new world is opening and i didn't see it before and of course i don't see my family physically but at the same time i have the feeling i'm still connected to them because they brought me into this world and even if they didn't know it better they kept me alive and i could grow out of this so and there are somehow also the strengths which i have inside me it was like a bouncing point into the new a let's say uncertain world because it was so painful there and it was like Fah! i jumped into something new and this was like you know when you have a gum and you pull it back 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 and then you Fah! let it fly and it's so much energy in it and at some point it's really sad and at the other hand it's i'm so grateful that i grew up in this environment that i'm so powerful now Mm. So um leading back to actually that the that the pain through the pain you actually got some uh, a lot of or also through the pressure that you you were able to develop a very deeper side of you and also um one thing that you are actually teaching is through pressure and urgency to actually develop into a flow state. Yes and to you know I, I see it like when you are when there's a lot of power let's say sitting on you you have the feeling for oh, there's such an urgency and such a pressure and what can i do and when you find yourself when you find yourself in your home you find also your desire 
And then your desire can become your guiding principle in your life. And of course, there will always be an urgency, but you, and a pressure, but you learn to, how to overcome it, to find yourself and to go then into the next step in your life. Mm. Wow. And also another thing is that you, that you also said, uh, the negative feelings that they are oftentimes an indicator for change and growth. Yes. Yes. And also for when you are, when you make yourself small, no? when you make yourself small and you don't, you, you, in some situations, you have the feeling I can't empower myself. It or it feels negative. Yeah, I feel something wrong. I don't want to be here. Maybe you are also really aggressive at someone because you have the feeling, okay, this is power over and I'm power under and I don't know how to get out. And then emotions and aggression is really a turning point also because it gives you a lot of energy to jump somewhere else. Yeah, let's talk about that because um, especially when, when, and this especially happens in, in, a, in a work relationship, for example, but it also happens in intimate relationships that one person is the dominant person and the other person is the, is in, well, is the supposedly powerless person or the person who feels that, that he or she does not have any power. And uh, oftentimes, or sometimes also that person who doesn't, who feels powerless sees themselves as a victim uh, in a way that, uh, like, oh, I cannot do anything. It's just, uh, the environment is just everything that, that basically was put on me and, and life is hard. Life is tough. How do you get out of that? How do you shift that power yeah. scale? And in the same way, how do you take yourself out of this victimhood to really realize, Hey, I can do something about that. Yes, it's let's say it's someone is above me and I feel really, really <laughs> like this at the victim. No? You can't. What we do normally is we we talk to this person, and say, "Please let me have this and this and that," and this means it brings you more and more into this state because you are begging or asking or whatever. No? And the solution is really to make this step up. Mm -hmm. And this step up can mean that you have to go out maybe of this situation because you have the feeling, I can't even think my own thoughts there or get my own feelings because I, it feels too tight. So one step is really to make a step back. Maybe just for one hour or for one day or for half a year or whatever. No? And then to think about how do I want it? What is maybe my contribution into this? It's always a pattern. No? Mm -hmm. A person can only be above me when I'm underneath. A pattern or also dynamic. It can yeah. be different in any relationship or it can be something that you bring to every relationship. Yes, yes, yes. And it's a, always, of course, I am a part of this pattern. And to find out what is my contribution to this pattern, to this dynamic. Okay, so what could that be, for example, a contribution that you're, if you're, if you see yourself in that powerless situation, what contributions could you bring? So let's say we go on vacations. Huh? My partner and I, we go on vacations and he says, what do you want to do? And I say, I don't mind. Please, you decide. So I give away my power automatically. No? So I make myself small. So it's in each situation you can create a powerless self. <laughs> so, because if you say, you decide for me, I give a, my power to you, means I'm at the same time powerless. So, and uh, of course, sometimes you like to follow someone. And the trick is to be aware of it. So I can give you my power, but I also can take it back always. So I can always change the pattern again and I can raise my voice and say, oh, today I would like to do this. Please follow me. I followed you yesterday. No? So it's to become aware of the pattern and not to stick always to the same pattern. That's very important. Mm. And what if um, now let's, let's put this in a work context, for example, if you're the employee and there is a very powerful employer 
Um, and and how, how does that fit? Like, what can you do as somebody that there is a at least an imagination of dependency? Yeah, it's I call it it's a leadership relationship, no? Because there's a leader, and I'm here, and I think this person has the leadership, and I'm the follower. No? It's the same situation, no? so that I sit together with this person, I ask this person, could we have a talk together, like one hour or whatever, whatever I have the feeling is I need. It's not just five minutes, because in five minutes you can't do it. But to say, I experience our relationship like this, how do you experience it? And then to talk about it, how do we want to have this leadership relationship and where can I take the next step or what is my experience what can i bring to the table and what can i contribute and where maybe do i need you and how do we talk about these imbalances and maybe it's good to have monthly a talk together where do we feel an imbalance and where do does this what we expect from each other not come into the routine or daily business. So we can go together step by step and develop a new relationship. It will not be just from one talk, but to think it as a process. Does that require that the more powerful person actually um, needs to go along with that? Because uh, what if the more powerful person is very convenient in, in his in his role and, and thinks, well, I don't, I'm, I'm very comfortable here. I, I'm, I don't see any need to change. Yeah. Let's say that's very often the case from the perspective of the employee. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it means... So the employee that, believes that, that, that this person is very comfortable and that they don't want yes, to change. Yes, yes. And it's very often like this that, the, let's say, the powerful person thinks that the other person is not interested, not motivated or whatever. and the, The employee thinks, okay, I'm not asked to be on the same level, so I don't know how to go into this. And it's really to step for one moment into each other's shoes and to test this to ask the other person, not just to think about it day and night, but to approach the other person. And in my experience, it's very often that the top level thinks, okay, the others, they are not interested. I have to do all the work. And the lower level thinks, okay, this boss, he will never change or, or change or she will never change. I don't even have to approach him or her. That's more or less a stuck situation. No? And to okay, so, so let's role play. Let's say I, I'm the powerful person, the employee um, or the leader, and you are the one who, who would like to have a conversation with me. How would you do that? I would say, uh, I, I really would like to talk to you about our relationship. And I really would like to have enough time to see different perspectives and to think about how can we create a better leadership relationship between us. Because I also would like to step into leadership sometime and to take my things into my own hands. And I suggest next week, or when do you have time, when could we have this meeting together? Oh, wow, that's very elegant. No, thank you. <laughs> and, and, and if we would put this in a, okay, that, that's a work situation. Let's talk about an intimate relationship. Yeah. Uh, a husband, wife, or, or whatever, boyfriend, girlfriend, and so on. And let's talk about that in a way that it's might be even, it doesn't need to be a toxic relationship, but it, it's, it's where one person is very, I mean, today we're all about like, oh, everybody is equal and so on. Like that's, that's basically the new paradigm of how things need to be. And we also know that the reality is not like that. And also that in order to create Uh, polarity or passion that there there is also this imbalance that that is healthy in a way but it doesn't mean that somebody needs to be all that somebody needs to be on a suffering end so 
but that happens as well. So if, if one person is on the power side and the other person is, is feels powerless in the relationship, what would be your recommendation there? I would say, okay, we, I'm happy with you. It's the first thing I would like to say. And I even would like to be happier with you. <laughs> and um, then I would say there is a pattern or a dynamics between us. It came through our daily routine, how we, we both go to work and we both have our lives. And at the same time, we want to be together. And I would like to find you a new. So, and therefore I would like to talk to you about our relationship. And I would like to know how you feel about our relationship and how I feel about our relationship because we are three. It's you and me, and it is also the relationship with the threesome we are in. Okay, that's fascinating. All right, <laughs> good. And um, I would say that probably in most cases, the other person will comply to go along and like, okay, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about it. Then you discover that there is an imbalance. How and and but also as as you said that that usually gradually slips into the the relationship. So once you have discovered it, how do you then shift it? I, it's the same pattern again. I have to step up. I have to say what I want. So so that the person has the feeling I'm an equal partner. And we can talk on an equal level. Because when I say, I'm so poor, and I really, you have to change, and I'm in the right position, this wouldn't be the right thing, because I don't step up. No? Mm. Interesting, interesting. And if, if the other person um, feels that, well, I don't need to change. Yeah, yeah, you need to step up, but I'm good. Yeah. They, I don't think you can educate another person. So I don't have, because then you are dependent on the change of the other person. I wouldn't go into this. Um, I would, I mean, you sometimes have to break up a relationship. It sometimes has to be. This is the one thing that you have the feeling, I don't have to stick with this person my entire life. This is the one thing. And on the other hand, if you really want to be with this person, you try it step by step. It's not just a one-time situation, but it's a step-by-step -step situation. And I would consider it as a, what, what is the time frame I would like to give to this situation? Is the one thing. And what you also could try is to bring a third person in, no? because sometimes it's like, da 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 play ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. And the third person can help you to step back if you can't do it on your own. Fascinating. So when basically, when you find yourself, when you find your own home and also when, when your own power also, then, then that also leads to success by taking the step up. Is that correct? Yes, it leads to success, more and more success. Each step is the uh, next step of success, wherever you want to go, because success is not defined from the outside. You define it from the inside. Mm -hmm. And you also create a new power theory. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, because I said power goes hand in hand with emotions and also with needs. And when you have the need of survival and you want to be safe, you slip very often in this victimhood. Someone has to protect me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you want to step up, you have the feeling, I want to be equal with the other person. And when you, the need is to, uh, the need is to have fair situations. And when this need is not fulfilled, when the situation is unfair, we very often become angry and aggressive. And it's very important also to use this emotion to make a next step into myself and to think about what do I want. And at the same time, it's also 
sometimes very sad to not to get what you want. And this leads you into this, what we said before, it's a deep, deeper point. It's somehow also like a pain and this makes you empower yourself. And when you are self-empowered, you feel joy because you have the feeling I can create everything what I want. So coming back actually to what we talked before and also well, actually to everything that binds everything together, real power starts inside of you. If yeah. I see like to, to be, to create power, you need to create it inside of you first before you can amplify it out into the world. What would be the ways for you, some daily, you, you mentioned meditation. Um, what, what could be some, some things that you can do maybe even on a daily basis or as a ritual in order to create that power, self-esteem in order to take yourself to the next level? What helped a lot for me was that I triggered my two sides of brain. When you ask yourself, writing down, what do I want? And answer with the left hand, if you're a right hand person, with the left hand, you trigger your right half of the brain means you trigger your emotion. So you're writing with the left hand. You ask yourself on the logic level, what do I really want? And then you answer with your left hand. And by writing with the left hand, you trigger your emotions, means you step deeper inside yourself and you bring your desire out on broad daylight in a written form. Because it's also very slow, because you mostly can't write very fast <laughs> with the left hand. <laughs> and therefore, it's more like what is your, what does your heart want? Mm. And I did this for like half a year and it changed completely my life. I did it every morning. What do I really want? What do I want today? What do I want in life? What is very important for me? And then I answered with my le with my left hand. So journaling, basically, as well, in a way, isn't journaling, it? But it's a brain heart journaling, no? <laughs> because you want to have something with your brain, and you answer with your heart. Wow, that is fascinating. I, I've never heard that, so it's really very very fascinating. Let's dig into some rapid fire question. What's one piece of advice that you would like to give to somebody who's just starting out on their journey? Uh, what do you mean in very young or out of Yeah, very young or also somebody who, who is at a turning point right now in their career who maybe has been in a corporate job for some time and is like, now I really want to step up and go to, to do what I'm really passionate about. I wouldn't jump from one situation to the next. I would have a time gap, a time slot in between where you can find yourself anew. Because when you jump from one situation to the next, you very likely take the old pattern into the new situation. So, and in mm. this time slot in between, like, I don't know, one month or whatever. I would like to try try to find out how does this new situation I would like to go in, how does this feel? How, how would I like to be in this new situation? That's like jumping from one relationship to another, isn't it? Yes, and it's when you break up one relationship, it's really good to have a little bit of time in between. <laughs> <laughs> not to take the old relationship into the new relationship just to change the person, but nothing else. Yeah, because wherever you go, you always take yourself with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is somebody that you admire or look up to? Um, I like Oprah Winfrey a lot. Oprah, because and why? Why? Because um, she steps into 
new situation and uncertain situations where you have the feeling, oh, that's so easy going. Yeah? I'm sure it's not so easy going because what she shows, it's so easy going. And I think it's um, hard work to make, let's say, difficult situations fly high and make it easy going. Mm. What's the best book you ever read and why? The best book. It's about corporate culture from Edgar Schein. And he invented the term corporate culture. And he said corporate culture is just a solution. It's when a leadership system or an organization tries to find a solution, they create a culture. And um, the, let's say the organization is growing, growing, growing. And the problem very often is that you take the old culture with you into the new strategy or desire or whatever. And therefore you have to talk about always the culture. It's also what we talked about before, the pattern or dynamics. This is the culture which you create over life. You create over life a pattern and it was the best pattern you could create 10 years ago. But it's not the pattern for your future or the dynamics for your future or the culture for your future. And this is therefore sometimes breaking with old patterns is very important. Wow. What do you do on a daily basis that moves you forward? I started um, like 12 years ago, my body broke down completely. And then I started with yoga. And what yoga does to my body, it I have the feeling it brings every, everything into a new flow. And I, this is what I told you before, the red races, <laughs> they go away like nothing. And I developed an own set of uh, yoga poses, which uh, over the years, no, which is, it's like a flow yoga poses. It takes like 15 to 20 minutes in the morning. And after this, I have the feeling, okay, it's somehow completely new everything. <laughs> it's a new life. <laughs> and wow. I, I really like to do a lot, a lot with my body. I came into this experience that my body is like a landing pad for everything going through me. And I like very much from Joe Dispenza this uh, definition of emotion. He says emotions is energy in motion. And then I have the feeling, you know, when there's a special emotion inside me and I move the energy in my body, <laughs> I can move my emotions up the scale from being afraid to being angry to being a little bit sad and then into wah, jump into the new day with joy. <laughs> wow. What are you excited about right now, Maria? About now, it's um, showing myself, my inner self more into a public space. Where I have the feeling I can't, con can't control what people make out of what I'm saying. And I uh, give a shit about this. <laughs> I like this a lot at the moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. So if somebody um, would like to know more, learn more about you and also about what you're teaching, where can they find you? You can find my website. It's... I'm going to link it in the, in, in the show yeah. notes as well. Right. And also on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, I do more at the moment in German, but I really would like to go more into English. So it takes maybe a few months until you can see something in English or you translate it on LinkedIn. <laughs> it's also possible. But uh, I would love to be in contact with people who are curious about what can be next steps in life. Beautiful. Any last parting thought that you would like to leave us with? 
Any 30 second final thought? I think um, if you have a messed up situation with power and love, <laughs> you have to define it yourself anew and take it into your own hands. You take your power and your emotions into your own hands and um, do it step by step by step by step by step. It's not just one step, it's a lot of steps and it's a lifelong process. And this is really nice to experience step by step by step by step your growth. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being with us today and thank you so much for all your wisdom. Once again, give it up. Maria Spindler, woo! Thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure being here with you. Thank you. Thank you for sticking with us until the end. To make this content even more valuable for you, please leave a comment below and share your thoughts and also share this video with somebody you care about who absolutely needs to see this. Thank you very much. Have an outstanding day and see you next time.